It's time to get down to business on the weekend's number one business program. Known as the king of networking, your host, Shalom Klein, has worked with thousands of entrepreneurs and created countless jobs. So, to success, let's get down to business. And indeed, we're all on small business jobs and entrepreneurship and business. We talk a lot about business here. You're on with Get Down to Business, and I'm your Shalom Klein. Remember, you can always download podcasts from Get Down to Business on my website at shalomkline.com. And while you're there, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Shalom Klein. It's going to be a jam-packed week of content and information you will not want to miss. So let's jump right in with a guest who will recount his personal experience stepping into his family's business enterprise and stepping on many toes in a short time. That's indeed David Bentel, who uh, has written a fantastic book, Dear Younger Me, Wisdom for Family Enterprise Successors. And uh, that's something I'm very passionate about. I know the book came out a little while ago, and um, and there's certainly a lot of lessons to be learned for all of our uh, for all of our family business owners that might be tuning in, and frankly anybody else. David, welcome to the program. Thanks very much. Uh, I, I did step on a lot of toes, Shalom, but uh, I got to learn to dance better. <laughs> you got to learn how to dance better. Well, David, you are the founder of Next Step Advisors, and you've been advising family enterprises for over 25 years. So you've probably learned a thing or two. You've also personally experienced succession in your family's real estate and construction business. And you're now a gifted author, coach, speaker, and facilitator. So you're pretty candid um, in the book, Dear Younger Me, Wisdom for Family Enterprise Successors. What message is Dear Younger Me? What's it sharing from all of your reflections? Shalom, I think I'll t- I'd like to start by saying that uh, one of the things that caused me to step on a lot of toes was that I was inspired by great leaders uh, people like Churchill, who I read about, people like Vince Lombardi, who I watched coach the first Super Bowl when I was when I was a kid. I actually watched it live with my mom and dad just got a color TV uh, the week before. So I, I've been, I was a Vince Lombardi fan and a Churchill fan. And Shalom, I wanted to be like those great leaders. Who wouldn't want to be like them? The problem is that um, I wasn't going to war like Churchill was, and I wasn't playing football like uh, Vince Lombardi was coaching his teams to do. And I, I brought their mantras, their approach into a family business. If you can imagine, you know, everyone knows Churchill said, never, never, never give up. I, I brought that approach to working with my uncle in our family business. So if we had an argument, I was never, never going to give up. Or when I was thinking about uh, Vince Lombardi as a as an inspiration, you know, he said, winning's not the most important thing. It's the only thing. Well, I wanted to win every argument. And uh, if you're going to be in a family enterprise, those, of the, those who are listening, if you're in a business, especially if you're in a family enterprise, you're not going to war. You're not playing football. You need different mentors. So I, mean, I, I, I brought the wrong mentors. I, I, I tried to emulate the wrong people in the context I was, I was leading. Wow. Okay. Again, I'm chatting with David Bentel, who's the founder of Next Step Advisors. And it's written, Dear Younger Me, um, definitely appreciate the perspective that you come in um, with. So what overall wisdom do you hope younger generations take from the book to forge better paths in their early careers? Or as you said, dance a little bit better. Well, yeah. So let's think about what was I doing wrong as a result of those mentors? I, I totally, not in hindsight, you know, it's easier looking back 25 years later, but I totally lacked humility. I thought I was right about everything. I totally lacked patience. I went to my uncle and he was our CEO, wanted to work with him and I wanted to succeed him. He was 55. I thought he'd retire in 10 years. So I wanted to get ready. And he said, you have to wait 20. And uh, I lacked patience and I lacked humility. And so the, the wisdom I'd like to impart to our listeners is that uh, we, uh, what I've done is I've developed a, a virtual wall of fame. And I would invite all of our listeners to consider doing that. In other words, I've developed a, a list of nine iconic leaders who I aspire to be like. So let's start with a couple of those. Benjamin Franklin and John Wooden are two of those. Benjamin Franklin has inspired me to be more humble. He made the most audacious statement. I listened to his audiobook, and he said in, in his uh, autobiography, 
I decided, quote, to deny myself the privilege of ever disagreeing with anyone. And, you know, that, that's such a remarkable statement, but it's not just a nice idea. If we are humble in business, then we will listen to our employees when they've got ideas. We'll listen to our, our customers when they have recommendations. Michelin Tire became a, a global powerhouse because the leaders in the Michelin uh, family uh, were willing to listen to their employees. That's how they learned uh, and developed uh, the radial tire and became a global phenomenon because they were willing to listen. So first thing I would encourage our listeners to think about is let's be more like Benjamin Franklin. Let's not always have to disagree. Let's have more humility. And then Shalom, if I can mention a second one, you know, I, I totally lack patience. John Wooden has become my virtual mentor in that respect. Most people would recognize that name. March Madness has just come and gone. You know, jo John Wooden was the coach of the UCLA Bruins led them to 10 NCAA basketball championships. The man was extraordinarily patient. Uh, some of our listeners might have heard that at the beginning of every season, he would look, he would sit down with his players and say to them, okay, gentlemen, we first need to learn how to put on our socks. So it takes a lot of patience to sit down with college students and tell them how to put on their socks. But he explained, if we're going to win an NCAA championship, we need to play better than our opposition. To play better than our opposition, we need to practice better. To practice better, we need to practice with intensity. To practice with intensity, we've got to avoid getting blisters on our feet. And to avoid getting blisters on our feet, we need to learn how to put on our socks properly. And so these are some of the mentors who've helped me to start cultivating uh, humility and patience. Am I making any sense? You, you certainly are, uh, David. Uh, you're making a lot of sense. And there's a lot of lessons that, again, as we said, younger generations can take from this fantastic read, Dear Younger Me, Wisdom for Family Enterprise Successors, um, which I know came out uh, a couple of years ago, but it's, it's just, uh, prior to super, just prior to COVID. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's super relevant. And we'll definitely get our listeners in touch with you. And of course, to find a copy of the book, I want to change gears for the remainder of our conversation and talk about family businesses, because I know you've spent a good part of your career advising yes. clients who are part of a family enterprise. What particular issues do these types of companies tend to wrestle with? Well, everyone knows, thank you, Shalom. Everyone knows that succession is a challenge, you know, transitioning. And we've got a television program in its fourth season now that's uh, he headlined with that uh, title. Succession is a challenge because it involves two very difficult uh, things to do. One is to transition the ownership of the business from one generation to the next. And the other is to transition the leadership from one generation to the next. Uh, and uh, in my experience, you know, I worked with our family companies for t the first 20 years of my career and now I've been advising other families. And one of the things that uh, trips up the next generation, and this is why I've written about it in Dear Younger Me, is that the, the members of the next generation will often lack the emotional intelligence necessary to interact with the others in the family. So I've illustrated that in terms of my, my impatience and my lack of humility. But uh, you know, if I can just talk about it in a couple of other ways, members of the next generation often think they always know what's best. So rather than being curious, which is the third trait that I like to chat, chat about, if, rather than being curious about why has the elder generation always done it this certain way, rather than being more like Einstein, who said, you know, I have no special talent, I'm just curious. We Next gens often come in assuming they know everything. And so uh, show them the, the biggest challenge that family members have, I think, is the next generation talk about wanting to take over rather than wanting to learn from the elder generation. And the last trait I'll talk about is listening. You know, I, I was not willing to listen to the elder generation teach me. I wanted to tell them. And, you know, I've been mentored virtually by Gandhi, who even wanted, he, he wanted to get the letters from his critics because he felt they could teach him. And so uh, the lesson that I would say that most family enterprise uh, successors, next gens really struggle with is having the emotional intelligence to be able to work and build good relationships with those that they're working with in the family enterprise. That's awesome. David, I really appreciate you uh, sharing your passion, your wisdom, your experiences, which not everybody does. So often uh, we tend to uh, wipe away some of our mistakes in the past and uh, you have captured them 
in a Dear Younger Me, Wisdom for Family Enterprise Successors. Lots of lessons for, uh, for really for everybody. It uh, doesn't need to be that younger me. I think everybody uh, yeah. has that little bit of youth um, in yeah. them. So uh, David Bentzel, uh, founder of Next Step Advisors, again, author of Dear Younger Me. How can we get in touch with you and pick up a copy of the book? Well, people, if they can just jump on my website, uh, nextstepadvisors.ca. I'd be delighted to, if people order direct from my website, I'm happy to sign the book and get it out to them and encourage them to think about developing their own personal wall of fame. You know, people like Walt Disney and Mother Teresa and Nelson Mandela or some of the other people I talk about in my book, because these folks can inspire us to take a different approach to the people we work with in our business, take a different approach to our family members, frankly, build better relationships. David, appreciate you coming on. Um, We've got to squeeze in a quick break. More small business jobs and entrepreneurs when we return to this moment. 